Passover, a feast of the Jews, was night. So the Lord times these events in a particular way, okay? We learn Exodus 12. I'm gonna, we're not going to go Exodus 12, over Exodus 12. We have to understand there is a relationship with that, okay? This idea of the unleavened bread, why is it so fundamental, okay? Because he is the bread of life. Meaning, if we don't have the word of God in us, we have no life. One of the things I'm going to be underlining over and over and over is this. We're going to go through tremendous amount of attacks, okay? Tremendous amount of temptations and tremendous amount of distractions and tremendous amount of deception. If you are not breathing, eating constantly the word of God, you're going to be lost. Pay attention. Every single problem, stamps, comes from lack of substantial ingestion, consumption of the word of God. That's the number one thing here. Okay, that's why we're talking about the Passover, which has to do with the unleavened bread, which is what? The word of God, right? So now he says, verse 5, John 6, verse 5. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company came unto him, he said unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? Think about it. He's about to make a miracle, right? And the next verse tells us, and this is said to prove him for himself knew what he was going to do. Obviously, he knows what's about to happen, but he positions these sentences for them and for us to understand what's about to unfold and make sure there is a foundation to the event, okay? Foundation to the event. Remember, how does the Lord heal the sick? Does he spread some cream and waves the... No, he uses his word. With his word, they're healed. Okay, so people are healed through his word. Okay, so let's continue. So everything he says is that important. So Philip answered him says, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them. That every one of them may take a little. I mean, obviously, it's 4,000 people, you know, or 5,000 people, rather. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There's a lad here which has five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? And Jesus says, Make the man sit down. Now, there was much grass. I wanted to pay attention to the word grass, okay? Because that comes up in Revelation all the time. And, and the grass is burnt up. Don't touch the grass. And also the grass represents multitudes and people, okay? And the fridge is open again, so we'll have to see what we're going to do about this. And Jesus said, make the man sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the man sat down in the number of bow. 5,000, okay? And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given things, he distributed it to the disciples, and the disciples to them, they were sit down, and likewise, the fishes as much as they would. Okay, I'm going to have to go back upstairs one more time, so hang in there. Okay. So the men sit down about 5,000. We know the story. Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, distributed to the disciples. 
and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise the fish as much as they would. When they were filled, okay, here's the word, filled. Why is that important? Because Exodus 12 tells us what? You cannot leave any piece of the lamb. You got to finish it up. You got to make sure the whole thing is roasted, burned with fire, nothing left in the morning. What does Matthew 4, 4 tell us? What do we get from Matthew 4, 4? King James, please. What does it say? Okay. But he answered and said, Matthew 4, 4. That's the Lord. Back to Satan. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word. Okay. Unless we get this idea that it's every word, that's the full lamb, that's the the unleavened bread, that's nothing left, fill up the basket full, we're going to be lost and deceived. This is where we were talking about last week of paper Christianity. One of the qualities of paper Christianity is selective scriptures, okay? Selective scripture. Now, I made examples, okay? I made examples for us to be lovingly sharing with each other that we cannot leave anything out of the Word of God. In other words, it's 66 books for a reason. Do you understand? And we saw, when we explain the clock, you understand why 66, right? Because 6 plus 6 is 12. So 6 plus 6 is 12, meaning it has to be 66. Not 67 and not, you know, 70 and not 65. So can you take the book of James out? No, because then it would be 65. Can you take Exodus? Can you take Deuteronomy out? No. Which means they all connect and show us the full story. We got to, look, we got to get to the bottom of this. We cannot disagree and put, Oh, that's Old Testament. I'm putting it in a box. Oh, it's been obsolete. I, I hear this all the time. It's not obsolete, okay? It's connected, integrated, explained, okay? And made for us to understand the full picture. Correctly organized, okay? So back to us. So now back in John 6, says... When they were filled, okay, he said to disciples, gather up the fragments that remain that nothing be lost. Pay attention. These are already filled. They already ate. They're going home. Why are we, why are we collecting the baskets? Little fragments. <laughs> you know, he just took five pieces and multiplied for 5,000 people. The disciples are probably thinking, okay, well, you know, Next time, we'll multiply it again, right? But the Lord says, no, do not. Don't leave anything out. Don't leave a word out. Come to me, and I'll explain to you, okay? The Holy Spirit will explain us all things. This is, this is the message, okay, as we continue the teaching. Do not make your own decisions. Do not think, okay, I'm good on this. Yeah, I heard a pastor 50 years ago, 10 years ago, or two months ago, or yesterday, saying that I'm okay doing this, I'm okay doing that. Do not stay with a man or woman telling you to do this or that. Take it as a suggestion that perhaps the Holy Spirit is telling you, I need you to look into that. I need you to come to me so that I can explain it to you. This is so important. This is so important. Okay? That's why after 5,000 people are fed, we're collecting 12 baskets and make sure they know a little fragment. The, the apostles are probably like, hey, you know, just hurry up. We got to go, you know. And the Lord is like, no, there's a tiny little fragment there. Put it back in. And it's like, well, what? They don't understand. We don't understand. We need to know that we don't understand it. 
We need to start from a point of view that we don't get it. In fact, do not think you get it, but go to the Holy Spirit. He will explain it to you over time and confirm it constantly. But you know what I can tell you from my personal experience? You got to ask. That's why Matthew 7, 7 is so important. Unless you ask, the Holy Spirit is not just going to come to you and say, okay, okay, let's sit down today. I'm going to explain, okay, how we talk, who we spend time with. He's not going to do that unless you ask. You actively have to ask, okay? So the Lord say, make sure nothing's lost. Okay, now we got 12 baskets. Okay, so let's go to Matthew. Okay, we're going to go to Matthew uh, 15. Okay, Matthew 15. All right, let's start in verse 30. Okay, let's start in verse 30. Matthew 15, verse 30. A great in great multitudes, okay, great multitudes, pay attention to this, came unto him, having with them those that were what? Lame, blind, dumb, maimed, many others, and cast him down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. Okay, that's the premise. He's showing great multitudes being healed. We know what the work of the Lord is, okay? We know from Luke 13. 32 and 33. We know what the Lord does. He heals and casts out devils. That's what he does, which means so many things. But primarily, he says it. That's what I'm going to be doing for two days. No, now we have multitudes, and that's what he's doing. Okay. Insomuch the multitude wandered when they saw the dumb to speak, the mean to behold, the lame to walk, the blind to see, and they glorify the God of Israel. Sounds like the last 2,000 years. Okay, let's continue. 32. Then Jesus called his disciples unto him and said, I have what? Compassion on the multitude. I have compassion. Like Israel was supposed to be saved. Nobody else. But now the Lord has what? Compassion on who? The multitudes. Who are these? Okay, we already know. Because they continue with me now three days. Okay, who is going to be continuing three days? Okay, let's 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 continue on. They have nothing to eat. We know what eating means. I will not send them away fasting, meaning without food. I'm not going to send them back. I'm not going to send them back. Okay, lest they faint in a way. His disciples sent him, "Where should we have much bread in the wilderness?" Okay, remember the wilderness, forty years. 40 years in the wilderness, 40 jubilees, 2,000 years. Okay. To fill so great a multitude. And Jesus says, how many loaves uh, do you have? And he said, seven and a few little fishes. So now we have seven. Okay. Now we're starting to compare, create two columns, right and left. Okay. Seven on one end, five on the other end. On the five, we know it was 5,012 baskets and they said seven and he commanded multitude to sit down on the ground again ground stands for grass again okay and he took the seven loaves and fishes to get gave thanks and break them and gave to his disciples disciples to the multitude and they did all eat and they were all filled and they took up the broken meat that was left seven baskets full and they did eat, and there were what? 4,000 men besides women and children. And he sent away the multitude, and he took ship. Okay, pay attention to the next. And came into the coast of Magdala. Come on. Okay, let's start getting excited here. All right, let's talk to comparison here. First of all, first of all, the point that the Lord is stressing, okay, and that's in Matthew 16. We just read it. Verses 9 and 10, okay, verses 9 and 10. The question he's asking is how many baskets? One is 12 baskets, the 5,000, okay? The other one 
is seven baskets. Well, to begin, what's 12 times seven? 12 times seven is? 84. 84. <laughs> 84. Okay. We already know what 84 is. Okay. So the total is 84. But why is 12 baskets and why is seven baskets? Let's pay attention. 12 baskets, okay, represents the 12 tribes of Israel. This is the Israel group. Seven baskets represents the seven churches. That's the Gentile group. Do you understand? This why this is why one is 5,000 and the other one is 4,000. I'm going to explain to you with this little diagram here. Okay. As usual, we'll do our uh, screenshotting thing. Right here. Okay. Right here. It's 4,000 years. 4,000 years. But one group has got an extra thousand. Okay. One group has got an extra thousand. So one group is 4,000 plus 1,000. And one group is just 4,000. You see? The gap in between is 2,000. Okay. The 2,000 years of grace. Can you, uh, can you just elevate it? I will, I will screenshot for everyone a little bit. Just like this. Okay. Yeah. All right. So one group, okay, the 5,000 group, the John 6, is the Jews. That's why we get 12 baskets, because it's the 12 tribes of Israel, which are gathered in the baskets, don't leave any fragments out. Make sure nobody stays out. We are collecting all of them out of this bread of life. Okay? But 4,000 years, the Lord has done everything he could. they still not getting it. So we're giving them an extra 1,000 years. 5,000 years. You understand? They got the 4,000, but that wasn't enough. We're going to take a break, which is grace, okay? And then at the end of that, we're going to put another 1,000 years, 5,000, 12 baskets. Understood? Okay, beautiful. The seven baskets are the seven churches. They only need the 4,000 years to be collected because then we have the 2,000 years of grace where everything's on pause. We're all saved by grace. And at the end of the grace period, they're collected. They're gone. They're taken. That's the church, the seven churches, the seven baskets. Does that make sense? Beautiful. Now we have a full, complete understanding of what the Lord is doing. We have these two groups, 12 tribes, seven churches. 12 tribes need one more thousand years to be finally completed. Whereas the seven churches are going to be done at the end, before and at the end of the tribulation. Now, go back to the Matthew 15. And notice that we said, Verse 32, Jesus calls the disciples unto him, have compassion on the multitude. That's a multitude of Gentiles because they continue with me, what? Three days. They're going to be continuing with me three days, okay? The 2,000 years of grace plus the 1,000 years of the millennia, they're going to be continuing with them, okay? They don't need the extra 1,000 to be collected. They will be walking with them. Once you turn the page, you go to the last verse, verse 39. Notice that we just read it says, He sent away the multitude, and two shepherds came into 
the coast of Magdala. He's telling you, once you're collected, here comes Magdala. Who's Magdala? Mary Magdalene. Who's Mary Magdalene? The bride. You see that? It's just telling us the story. It's saying, we finish up collecting the seven churches, make sure the baskets are full, whoever's supposed to be in, and then we go to Magdala. Meaning, you're going to be joining to the bride. Those 12 fragments, those seven fragments, okay? Sorry, the seven fragments. Cosa Magdala. Beautiful. Now, once we do that, we can now go back to John 6, because now we know that John 6 talks about the 12 tribes. And what happens? So now we go to... Okay. We're going to go to verse 14. So now we connect collected the 12 tribes, right? Let's see what happens. John 6, verse 13. Sorry, 14. Then those men, when they see the miracles, or the miracle that Jesus did, said, this is of a truth that a prophet that should come into the world. Now they're going to begin to realize a prophet comes. You understand? These are the Jews begin to open their eyes. Once the collection is done, the tribulation begins. Now we're going to hear what on the two sides. We'll see it in a second. This is what's mind-blowing about this. Okay? He's giving us the look into the tribulation. It says, this is of, is of a truth that, pro, that prophet, this is of a truth that prophet that should come into the world. Now they're beginning to see Hosea 6.2, right? Hosea 5.15 and 6.2. Now in their tribulation, their affliction, they'll seek me early. Now they're beginning to see, okay? Now, that's why we know it's talking about the Jews. When Jesus, therefore, perceived that they would do what? Come and take him by force. They are now forcing his return or pushing out a substitute for the Messiah. To make him a king, he departed again to a mountain himself alone. Is going in the rapture, taking his church into rapture. You're, you're not making me king. This is not time yet. 16. And then when the even was count, come, which means when darkness comes down okay his disciples went down into the sea remember this is the 12 tribes okay and they enter into a ship and went over the sea towards Capernaum and it was now what dark and Jesus was not come unto them you understand praise God this is what the Lord is teaching us it's saying look the 12 tribes, they're going to start seeing, they're going to start seeking, they're going to want the Messiah. They're not going to be able to get me until the end of tribulation. So now they're going to the ship. How is that going to happen? Because of the year 6,000, which is when? 2027. How do we know that? How do we know the year 6,000 2027? Because of Revelation 20 verses 2 to 7. For those of you who are new, those are the six verses where we hear the word 1,000 years. Six times. 6,000 years verses 2 to 7. Revelation 20. 20, 27. Which means that's exactly what happens here. It's dark they go into a ship the lord is not there okay he went where into a mountain alone he's back in heaven with the bride okay praise god they went over the sea towards capernaum why capernaum because that's where jesus made his house 
So they're going towards, let's call it heaven for now. They're going towards his house, which is Capernaum. Okay? But not there yet. They're not there yet. And what happens? It was now dark. Jesus was not coming to them. And the sea arose by what? By reason of a great wind. Again, the tribulation. You understand? Now they're in the ship. The Jews, the 12 tribes, they were meant, okay, meant to, to endure and survive the tribulation, are now in the ship. So we're around the year 2027, and they're making it through the remainder of the tribulation. This is serious. This is very serious. I'm concerned. I'm concerned that we're looking at this as literature. We have to understand what's about to unfold. And people are focusing on dates, not understanding the depth and importance of what the Lord is saying. If Unless we eat the whole bread, okay, people are going to be left behind. I'm telling you the truth. I'm speaking truth. I've been through a lot this week, but by the grace of God, I'm standing. And it's all thanks to brotherhood and help. But most importantly, but the word of God, I can only be standing because that, yes, my brothers and sisters and everybody, my wife and family being supported. But at the end of the day, I'll, if I don't have the word of God, I'm not going to be able to stand. Okay, so I'm speaking the truth. Let's continue. So now look at this. When they wrote about what? 25 or 30 what's between 25 and 30 27 can be any clearer than that he says it's between 25 and 30 what's the half point between 25 and 30 27 and a half really but for long they see jesus what Walking on the sea, meaning they're beginning to understand he's coming. They're getting it. Okay? Drawing nigh, coming close, is arriving. We see the signs. We understand. Now we know our eyes are open. And to ship and they were what? Afraid. They're afraid. It's a tribulation. They still don't understand. They don't know all things. But he said to them, it is I, be not afraid. Then they willingly received them into the ship. Come on. These are the Jews. They finally say, okay, we finally accept you. Praise God. Come on. This is not my wisdom. I'm trying to say it as loud as I can. Not my wisdom. Okay. The Lord shows things to us when he decides to. Let's continue. And immediately the ship was at the land where they went. Okay? Crystal clear. We know the picture. Okay? 12 tribes, 144,000 plus whoever else is supposed to be part of this you know, remnant of Israel. Making it through the tribulation. The Lord is saying, I'll give you another extra thousand years. Five thousand total. You're going to be making it through. It's the trial tribes fragments, meaning a remnant of what? Of the full bread that was sent out. Of the full word is just 12 baskets left. Okay, good. So then we got first story. Well, let's go back to Matthew. Matthew, we're going to start back in chapter 16. Okay? Chapter 16. What do we got there? There, they got to Magdala. What does it mean? Magdala is the bride. Mary Magdalene. Okay? They're take, the bride is taken. Now the tribulation is about to unfold. Okay. We already... No, it's about the tribulation. How do we know that chapter 16 is about the tribulation? How? 
because, and we've done a teaching, there's a full video series I've done on that, which is the Matthew 16 series, okay, goes from verses 23 all the way to verses 28 and the beginning of chapter 17. So let's review that, okay? We're going to review that. But before we go into that, let's see what he says at the beginning of ch chapter 16 that explains that he's talking about the tribulation. So we just said it, Matthew 15, 39, Magdala taken, bride is gone, okay? Now he's saying, 16 verse 2, he answered and said unto them, when it's evening, you say you will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, notice, evening, okay, verse 2, and then verse 3, morning. You understand? Evening, morning, okay? It will be foul weather, fair weather, foul weather, evening, morning. For the sky is red. Again, it's just giving us clues. It's just introducing us to the idea. You hypocrites can discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. What times? The end times. What is this? A wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. There shall be no sign given by the sign of the, prof the prophet Jonas. It's saying, okay, I'm about to tell you about the end times. You don't understand it, but some, someday you will. And he left in the apartment. When disciples would come to the other side, they've forgotten again to take bread. As usual, they're forgive, forgetting the word of God. Listen to me. Less than two years ago, I keep saying, okay, I was on my way to hell thinking I was doing great. When God, when the Holy Spirit came to my bed, I didn't even know what was the Holy Spirit. What did he say? What did he say for those of you who watched my testimony? This is the word of God. That was the first words he said, pointing to the Bible that my wife was reading. This is the word of God. It didn't say, you're a bad man thinking that you're good. You're going to hell. I'm here to save you. I'm going to give you a new church. None of that. He says, this is the word of God. This is the word of God pointing to the Bible that she was reading. It wasn't even a King James, I can guarantee you. But he just said, this is the word of God. What happens here? They forget to take bread. The second that we let go of the word of God, okay? Because there's other ways to fix things. We are lost, okay? Lost. Okay, let's continue. Don't you understand? We read this. Neither remember. He's telling them again. Look, I'm going to break it down for you again. Okay. There's two groups and there's different baskets for each group. You guys are not getting it because you can't even see the signs of the time. So I'm going to give it to you. I'm asking you, how many baskets? We read it through. Seven and 12 is 84. It's going to be a final 84 years. Okay. 84 years. Now you understand that I'm about to tell you what happens during those 84 years, which is the tribulation. Then understood they how they bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Why is this so important? Let me tell you why. The Lord is saying this. If you learn from a man, if you trust a man or a woman, and don't come to me directly and feed from me directly and feed from the Holy Spirit, you are going to get the wrong message. Okay? Now, do you eat bread once and you're good for life? No. You have to eat multiple times a day. That's why the Lord designed us so that we, we continuously need bread so that we will understand we continuously need this word. That's why the Lord designed us that we live inside homes so that we would know that in order to survive, we need to be inside the house. You understand? You need bread and you need a house to live. The rest is optional and great. You know, fresh water, a toilet, a bed, all of this is absolutely wonderful. But essentially, those are two things you need. 
a home of sort, okay, and bread. And that's why the Lord makes sure that we understand these two concepts. So he's saying, if you don't get the idea of the doctrine of the Pharisees, okay, listen to me. Deception is not what you think, okay? Here's a testimony. I'll give you the less detailed version, okay? Part of this final, this week that I just went through has been a miracle. And the other part was a catastrophe. That's why the miracle. The Lord was holding all of us in this family together to make it through. Now, as soon as we made through the major one, okay, or at least on the other side of it, here comes another just as equally catastrophic event by somebody that we know, let's say no is a big word, but somebody that we are familiar with and trusted to a certain level showing up at our home out of the blue. This is somebody who lives in a completely different state that we never met in person, okay? But Christian and all. Shows up at our home in the midst of what we finished going through, which was pretty major. Well, what are you supposed to do? Give hospitality, okay? And in the midst of as this, this uh, young woman brings her daughter, who's just coming out of a major internet predator thing in her life well we're concerned we're offering hospitality we're, it's out of the blue what are you going to do this young woman takes off for a day and a half and drops this daughter with us we don't know her she just came out of us you can just imagine we said no good Please come back, get your daughter, and, okay. Drama, as you can imagine. Everything done with prayer, forgiveness, and sending blessings. Okay, woman is gone. Now we're breathing again. But you know what? This woman was telling me about the daughter going through this because she was on the internet playing certain apps, and people were pretending to be 12-year-olds. They were not, right? Beautiful. I didn't even know that that was truly a thing. So yesterday, I hear my daughter, nine-year-old Gabby, whom you met, laughing in a room. Well, guess what? We went up there, my wife and I, and she was on a chat, innocent chat, with some 10-year-old pretending, chatting with her, and they already got her phone number. Now, had I not gone through that tragedy and drama, I wouldn't even know. So the Lord sent me somebody from way the south of the U.S. as a seemingly drama into my life that actually saved me, my daughter, from doing something crazy or letting her go through. You understand what I mean? The Lord organizes things so that we can be on the right path. And sometimes it yes, looks like Lord. a tragedy. You understand? You understand what just happened? We thought that there was just more problems on top of our lives, but it was actually the Lord saying, hey, let me show you through this drama, this tribulation, what you have to do to make sure that your daughter doesn't go through what this other young girl went through. You understand? Praise God for that. Okay? What does it mean? We keep our faith and the word of God. Okay, deception, this is what I'm saying. Deception is at all time high. It's coming from all over. We spoke about Genesis 6, 4. Nephilims are all over. Pastors, preachers, teachers, all kinds. Unless we go by the word of God, every bit of it, we're going to be lost, okay? I'm not going to stretch this teaching too much. We're just going to, we're just going to focus on, on the breads and the baskets for now. Anyway, so back to us. Look at this. Then, 16, 13, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, 
who is Caesar. We know who that is. He asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they said, you are John the Baptist and Elijah. Remember when we spoke about the two sets of men? There's two men here and two men there. Who were the ones walking with God? Noah and Enoch. And who were the other ones? Elijah and John the Baptist. Why? Because John the Baptist is Elijah. You remember that? Elijah, John the Baptist, same. Noah and Enoch, same. Elijah rapture, Enoch rapture. Noah going through the tribulation in the ark. John the Baptist beheaded in the tribulation. Do you understand that it's not an accident? Oh, some people say you're Elijah. Some people, John the Baptist. Let's just throw some names there. It's not. It's not. He's telling us. Okay, this is this is tribulation material. Are we talking about the two witnesses? Maybe. Let's continue. He said, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, you're Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus says, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood. Okay, here's the key. As not revealing to you by my father, which is in heaven. Okay, look, when I read this first, the first time about it, uh, two years ago, or when I read it first time, that's how I felt. I felt, wow, this is what happened to me. Okay, the Lord came, talked to me, I started reading his word, and he revealed himself to me. Look, just like this, I was be weeping, I felt he was speaking with me, but he's speaking to us. If you, if you learn your gospel from a man, no problem. It's not a bad thing, okay? But now it's time to make, sh make sure you learn it from the Holy Spirit, okay? Make sure. Look, we have a choice. We can choose to be satisfied, okay, with what we think we know. Or we can decide to make sure that we do know what the Holy Spirit wants us to know. Across the board, from salvation, okay, to behavior, to anything else in between, starting with salvation, I would say, and must know, okay? But here's what the Lord's saying. You're blessed. You're blessed because not flesh and blood revealed to you, but the Father directly. Now you're blessed. Well, you, you want to be blessed. You want to be blessed. Okay? And I said to you, you're Peter. Upon this rock, I'll build my church. The gates to hell shall not prevail. I'll give you into the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you shall bind on earth shall bound in heaven. Whatever you shall lose on earth shall be loose in heaven. This is the whole Peter's key series. We've done that. Okay? Then it says, we're going to go down all the way to verse 23. In verse 23, this is the tribulation series. I, I have a full teaching on the channel, so you can go to that, the Matthew 16 series, but just as a refresher. So Jesus turned and said to Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Okay? You are an offense unto me, for you savors not the things of God, but those be of man. Okay. The short of the teaching is this. 23 is talking about Satan being cast down, okay? 20, verse 23 is Satan is cast down, meaning the tribulation is unfolding. It doesn't say that it's cast down and, you know, things explode. It says it's cast down, meaning the doors are open. That period starts, okay? Now, traditionally, and we can still understand it that way, we see 22 to 32 as the 10 years of labor and sorrow. And that's okay. Totally fine. We also know that 22 does not end or ended until March of 23. Okay. We also know there is a 23 to 32, 2332 sequence. That's actually 10 years as opposed to 22 to 32, which is 11 years. Okay. So 23 is just as equally uh, one, if you want, with 
22. But the bottom line being that at the start of these 10 years, Satan is cast down. Okay, so it's brought down here. Now, what happens? As this begins to unfold, we see verses 24 and 25 saying that as these 10 years unfold and eventually tribulation starts, it says, verse 24, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. These are people are beginning to convert in and around the rapture time. And then 25, if whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. This is as the tribulation starts. You're going to have to deny the mark of the beast and choose the Lord. So you will lose your life. And then verse 26, this is what we recognize as the Antichrist. Okay, why? Because for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? There's only one man that can gain his whole world, the whole world. There's only one man. He's not, the Lord is not using a figure of speech. Well, you know, if you gain the whole world, Sister Brigitte, no, it's not for you. It's the Antichrist, okay? He is the one who's going to gain the whole world. He's in the scripture. We know that. So he's talking about the Antichrist. And he will lose his soul. And then, for the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father's angels, and he shall reward every man according to his works. Because the tribulation will be works-based. You're going to have to do things to stay alive, uh, embrace the gospel, follow the commandments. There will be different things that need to be done just for you to make it through. You understand? So, here's the works. Verily sent to you, there be some standing here. Where? In Jerusalem. That's where you're speaking. Said, oh, some, some be standing here. We shall not taste death. Some will be a remnant. And they, until they see the some man come in his kingdom. Okay? So that's 28. And then 17 continues the sequence. So verse 1 equals to 29. 2 to 30. 17, 3 to 31. 17, 4 to 32, and 17, 5, 33. And 17, 5, which equals 33, is while he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and a voice out of the cloud which says, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear you him. Okay, so that's the final moment of the tribulation, the establishing of the New Jerusalem. Now, I want you to notice that now we have a full account, okay, of the 12 tribes of Israel group versus the seven churches. What happens? Let's go through the calculations. The, the first of all, the 12, the, the 12 tribes of Israel, we have a key point, which we said earlier, is when they go into the ark, when they go into the ship, and that's 2027. We need to have that as our reference, okay? 2025 is the likely start of the tribulation with the rise of the Antichrist in full power. 2027. As the Jews recognize what happened, they go into the ark, okay? And they make it through the tribulation. That's the year 27. On the other hand, we have the seven churches, okay? The seven baskets. Twelve baskets, seven baskets. The bride, the Magdala portion, is taken early, okay? Before all this unfolds. Then the rest go through the tribulation and some will be standing some will okay now we can look at the math okay look at the math look at the math let's start with the 12 tribes the 12 tribes we know it's five five thousand and twelve okay i'll write it here so we got the five thousand Okay, divided by five, okay, divided by 12, okay, right there. That's Israel, 5,000 
divided by five breads, divided by 12 baskets. Okay. This gives us 83.3. Okay. Okay. 83.3. Now we have the 4,000 divided by seven breads, divided by seven baskets. Okay. That's the second group, which gives us 81.63, okay? 81.63. Okay, now, here's where I want everybody to pay attention. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God, for sure. Now, here's where I want everybody to pay attention. 1948... It's there. There's no question. Okay. May 14, 1948. Okay. First clock starts. No question. 84 years to 32. Good to go. That gives us the 81.33 years. Sorry, 83.3 years. 83.3, which clocks down to 2031. No questions about that. Okay. So... We're going to write it here, 1948, 1948 takes us to 2031 and to 2032. One is 83.3 and one is 84. Okay, right there. So this is absolutely in place. There's no problem and there's no question. We know that, 48. Okay, 83.3, 84, 32, 31. Okay. Okay. Now, what we now know and we were shown is December 5th, okay, of 1949. December 5th. What happens in December 5th? Jerusalem becomes a capital. Okay. So, December 5th, 1949. Okay. Once we add the 83.3, which is the Jews, the 12 tribes, okay? The 12 tribes, 83.3, we get to 2033, April 4th. Okay. So there it is. 2033, April 4th, 8.33. Do we all remember the relationship between 8.83.3 and 2033? Do we all remember this relationship? No. 8.33 in military time is 20.33. 8.33, it, it's 20.33 p.m. 8.33 p.m. it's 2033 you can't miss it jerusalem new jerusalem you can't miss it you can't we can't miss it okay but what happens that if we add the 81.63 okay 81.63 years which is what which is the gentile the seven baskets we get to 2031 2031, which is what? Second coming. Why? Because the Gentile church comes back with the Lord in 31. You see that? Praise God. Okay, so now what? Notice what we have. We have a sequence of three years. Okay. 31, 32, and 33. 31, 32, and 33. You see that? These are the three years, the final box. This is the box, okay? Between second coming, New Jerusalem, end of all things, or end of the generation, end of the fig tree generation. That's the box, okay? Why is that important? is very important. 
because if we count 70 years, okay, let's do it like this. Because if we count from 1949, December 12, which is Jerusalem, okay, the four years of Leviticus 1923, then the 70 years actually don't are not completed until December 23. So this the parallel count, the parallel count 48. Okay, we know 48 to 22, but 49 is to 23. Do you understand? So now we have 49 and 48, both important, both running parallel, one towards New Jerusalem and one just toward the end of all things. What does that mean in simple terms? It simply means that 2 Peter 3, verse 8, which is one day is a thousand years, a thousand years a day. Okay, it's telling us 2 Peter 3. 2, 3, verse 8, 31, 2, 3 plus 8, 31. That 31 is this massive year because you can count it both from 48, but also from 49. Both tell us that 31 is the second coming. From our understanding, remember Hebrews 11, 6, okay? Now we have something to ponder. Now we have something to ponder. Why? Because we're going to go to Luke 13. Luke 13. Okay. Luke 13. Verses 32 and 33. Okay. Luke 13. Luke 13 is verses 32 and 33. And we know the verses. It's the two days. Okay. But it's two verses. Is verses 32. And these verses 33. You understand? Now, this is what I want you to notice. It's Luke 13, which means 31. Okay? 13 and 31 are the same. And then verses 32 and 33. Look at that. Okay? So it's 31, 32, and 33. Again, 31, 32, 33 is telling us those are the three years. 31, 32, and 33. The three years. The final box. The final box. The Lord is saying, especially verse 33, he says, I'm going to be walking for three days. Walking, meaning the millennium is included. So now we, now we have a full view of 31, 32, 33, final box. 27, okay? which goes from 25, 26, and 27, okay? Why is that important? Okay, 25, okay, start of the tribulation. Why? How do we know that? You can, you can already open your microphones now, we, or since we're not doing the live, so if you want to jump in. 25, why is 